guys, welcome to the final part of the eye tutorial. So this is of the dog eyes. So this is the reference photo over here. It's a photo I took of my um, one of my Ridgeback Girls, Honey, and it looked really cool because the pupil of the eye looks like it has a it's a star shape. So I thought it'd be funky to draw, and there's a lot of um, highlights and definition to put in this eye. And this was actually the most difficult eye out of the four that I drew. <laughs> Um, but I will explain all of that as we go. So the actual drawing is this one and my colors in my drawing are a lot darker and a lot brighter but that was because I chose to make it that way. I felt like the print, um, it's almost like the print makes the dark areas darker and the light areas lighter and I don't like the way my printer has been printing so I will obviously change it up in my drawings and sort of enhance it even more if I can and that's what I did with this one okay so let's get started okay so I'm using a very sharp Prismacolor Premier black pencil and I am starting with the darkest of dark areas around the eye So this, this one has so many li different little bits and pieces and shapes so I needed to pay extra attention to my reference photo to make very sure that I was not going over the areas that I shouldn't be going over. So there's a lot of little like highlighted watermarks and um, just there's a lot of highlighted bits right next to the really dark areas. So. You want to make sure to not go over the highlighted bits with a really dark pencil because it's it, it'll just confuse you. So pay attention to the reference enough for you to be able to um, properly put the base colors down. So when you're doing these first layers of value, you want to take your time and do it properly because Afterwards, it's just about detailing. You're not worried about finding certain areas because you already have that down. But if you get that wrong in the beginning, then um, it can sort of make the entire drawing look completely different. And then you may have to start over to fix that sort of problem. So some parts I'm using a firmer hand than other parts. And um, that's because some, the parts where I'm using a firmer hand is the areas that I want to be very, very black. And the rest of it may have colors that will come over it later. So that is why some of the areas are a little bit lighter. So these eyelashes on top of the eyes are really, really dark. So I'm not afraid of pressing quite firmly with that. I am paying attention to the direction of the sort of eyelash little fairy hairs there um, because they sort of curve around so the ones right on top of the eye sort of go in a downward motion and the other ones start curving up um, so they go they start going down and then curving up into a little sort of curl kind of thing so now I'm using a lighter pencil to put down a prisma color pencil so I want a wax based pencil for this and I'm highlighting the really, really light pieces of fur on top of the eyelid. Now, this is such a close-up that a lot of those pieces of fur look like they're quite far apart. And then you've got a lot of pieces of skin in between. So it's not like a whole bunch of fur on top of each other, like it gets, you know, further down the picture. But around the eye, there seems to be more skin um, between the fur. So I just want to identify the light pieces of fur before I go and do those dark pieces of skin and because it's a wax based pencil that I'm using first I'll be able to go over it with a darker pencil without worrying about um, making it too light so the minute I put a solvent back over it it's going to make the light wax based pencils that I put down first pop out more um, so they won't disappear between all the dark colors that I'm putting in so now I am filling in the dark areas of skin. And sort of going between those hairs. I want to be careful that I don't go too dark. That, pair, that area of skin that I'm doing there, I'm sort of working in like a scribbly sort of zigzag motion because there's a lot of texture on the skin there. So I don't want to make it too smooth. So by drawing in these sorts of scribbles, you're going to later just develop that 
illusion of texture. So just going in for the darkest area of the bottom of the eye, I'm still using my black pencil and sort of, sort of just forming shadows, that's what I'm doing here. The, these are going to make it seem like it's shadows between um, pieces of fur and also it's giving the skin a texture because we can go dark earlier because we can put the wax based pencils of a lighter color on top of the skin just to give those extra bits of highlight. Now I just want to define the shape of the pupil in the eye so that it makes it easier to identify which areas I'm working on at what time and then I won't go over my lines. Now I'm using a grey and I am filling in the entire surface around the eye so that would be my sort of base colour. Now I'm just darkening up some of the areas that need darkening up with a darker um, cool grey I'm doing the same in the eyelid because I got the blackest of blacks, black areas in so it will be easy for me to identify exactly which area I'm working on. Again at the bottom of the eye you saw I worked in this sort of zigzag motion and now I'm just adding more of the colours in the rest of the area as well as in the pupil. So getting to the eye um, I am using the pinkish values around the edges and putting the pink in the area of that of the ear, the tear duct as well. I couldn't find the word for a second. So then I'm using this beige color as a sort of beige color in the eye because I know the eye is quite yellow. And this is an indigo blue just to add more of those blue tones around the eye. And now I'm going to blend it with my solvent and now you're going to really see that indigo blue pop out a lot. That is okay. This is the bottom layers. So these, and also you could see as I was blending with the solvent on the top, those light areas of Prismacolor that I put in for the light areas of fur just popped up among those dark areas that we put around it. So you don't have to worry about the dark colors going over those really light colors. So everything looks really dull and almost sort of like comic book colors sort of thing. And now we're going to start adding more and more details because we've got our values down. So now it's going to make it easy for us to just add the subtleties of everything and just build it up, build it up, build it up until we get to a point where we're quite satisfied. So I wanted my eye to be a darker yellow. The print that I have of the eye has quite a dull sort of yellow. It's, I think my printer makes the lighter colors lighter and the darker colors darker. So that isn't very convenient for me. So I am enhancing the colors in my actual drawing according to the way I want it. So I want the colors to be brighter and darker and that's what I'm doing. So adding some browns in the iris of the eye. And paying attention to the sorts of various shapes within the eye. So there's quite a large highlight in the eye and that was actually the reflection of the sliding door in Honey's eye. So that's a big rectangular highlighted bit in the eye. I also added white there to the areas that are going to be um, the moist sort of white areas within the tear duct and the highlighted bits. And now that I blended with the solvent you can see that yellow just pops right out and it just makes it look so much brighter. Now I'm adding my white wax based Prismacolor pencil just to emphasize some of the highlights in the eye and within the rest of the iris. Again working in sort of scribbles to give it a textured look. Now I'm coming in with a darkish sort of purple brown and that is going to enhance some of the detailing along the edge of the eye. Coming in with the black, making some of the areas darker because they aren't quite dark enough. That's going to define the sort of depth or do uh, deeper areas around the eye. Using a cool dark grey, I am emphasizing parts of the iris once again. Now I'm using my Prismacolor Indigo Blue also to emphasize areas in the tear duct. Um, I don't want to add too much black and from my reference I can tell that there is a bit of blue in there so that is why I'm adding the blue. 
Now to the real pink part in the tear duct, I am adding that in and then I'll make it a little bit lighter with a brighter sort of fleshy tone. Now I'm just making the blackest of black areas really dark. And adding more definition around and on top of the eye. So I'm also making the eyelashes on top of the eye a bit darker, just to emphasize that a bit better too. And working on the skin tone areas among that's between the pieces of light, pieces of fur sticking out there. So I did say um, in the introduction of this video that I found that this eye was the most difficult to draw out of the others. Um, probably because of the shape of the iris so that I really had to pay attention and because there's so much detail in that tear duct, it's like she's got triple a triple tear duct. You need to pay attention to all those little shapes so it looks real. So that's what I found a little bit tricky. And also she didn't just have a bunch of fur around the eye. She had skin so I had to make sure that I made it look like skin and made the fur look like fur but also made it look like there was skin between the fur so now I'm blending everything in again you'll see those light bits will pop out again because we put those light white wax based pencils on first before we did the darker areas that's why they pop out and they'll stay highlighted throughout the the drawing now using my, a lighter Prismacolor pencil I'm creating textures on top of the lighter areas of skin. So this is where um, it's so nice using this method because we can come in with our lighter colors on top of our darker colors and we can start forming these sorts of um, textures and definitions. So keep building up all those lighter bits on top. So you would have seen that all of a sudden it was very very dark all around the eyes but I knew that I was able to lighten it up or I would be able to lighten it up and that's what I did there. So now I'm coming back in with a darker indigo blue to define more areas under the eye which is going to make that part of the eye look a little more three dimensional instead of just like a scribbly sort of flat area under the eye. I'm also taking some of the pinkish brown color that I used in the eye and using it around the eye because I always want to use the colors that I'm using in the eye around the eye and vice versa. Colors in your background you want to use gently in your foreground and colors in the foreground you want to incorporate in the background. Blending once again so that I can see exactly um, how everything is turning out and to get that crayon look gone and then emphasizing more final detail. Adding some more yellow tones to the eye making that highlight white again, using an even lighter Prismacolor blue and a white Prismacolor pencil to emphasize those highlights under the eye even more, using a scribble kind of motion to create that texture, that textured look. Paying attention to the direction of these areas because it goes from a texture on the right and then as you move to the left it almost goes sort of in a straight straight sort of strokes. Blending again, so now we're getting to a point where we're just adding all those final touches. Now I want to emphasize those whiter, lighter hairs even more, so I'm using a light yellow pencil and I'm going over individual strokes of fur on top of the eyelid just to make them pop out a bit more because I have blended so many times I feel like those lighter colors have just kind of fallen in with the background so that just makes those hairs pop out even more doing the same with the bottom adding some lighter brown areas as well because it's not just completely yellow so always taking note of my reference and trying to figure out where I need to add more color or more highlights. So doing final like highlight touches with my white Prismacolor pencil 
And then coming in with my black and just emphasizing the areas that I know are very, very dark. And that brings us pretty much to the end of the drawing. So you can see the eyes are really, really simple. And if you feel like you draw, you, you're drawing an entire animal, but you don't just, you know, you're afraid of drawing all these other areas, focus on one small specific area and just do that and then work your way through a drawing. That way it becomes less intimidating and um, also if you practice doing a bunch of the same things like you practice doing a bunch of different eyes you practice doing a bunch of different snouts or mouths or whatever it is you'll find that by the time you get to a point where you want to put the whole piece together it will all just flow really easy because you'll do the eye and then you'll do the snout and then you'll do the mouth and then you'll do the ears and then the rest of the fur and that is it'll just start to flow, it'll start just getting easier and easier because you've, if you can gain the confidence in every area of drawing something it just makes it easier when you get to the point of drawing a complete thing because you feel like you've put enough time into learning individual things about individual parts of an animal or person. So I thank you guys for watching, this is the final part of this tutorial, so this was the fourth eye um, the first one was the horse, the second one was the cat eye, the third one was the macaw eye, and finally this one is the dog eye. So I really hope you guys like that. I know that before I did focus on drawing snouts of a cat, a dog, and the muzzle of a horse. And then I guess I need to get to a point where I will do a tutorial on drawing teeth and gums and the tongue and getting all those because I know that can be a little bit tricky so I'll get um, I'll definitely schedule in a tutorial for that as well so thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys soon bye